Okay, so I'm here to talk about the virtual machine export. Um, so first of all, why would you want to do it? Um, it's much easier to move disk images out of precision volume claims if you use our new export features. Uh, we use very standard formats, but uh, a disk image, a raw file in a, in a PVC, uh, you're not super sure how to get it out. Well, it uh, makes you feel a little bit uh, like you're locked into Qvert, and maybe that reduces the feelings of vendor lock-in a little bit. And of course, it makes it very easy to debug Qubit specific problems. Suppose you want to run your virtual machine with QMU, or you want to mount your disk images as loop devices and see what's inside them, um, then that lets you do it very easily. Uh, so what is it? Uh, it lets you take the machine, a virtual machine out of Qubit, but also a persistent volume. Uh, when I say a virtual machine, I mean an offline one, but you can also take a virtual machine snapshot and export that. Uh, one nice thing about it is that the format uh, gives you a HTTP URL, and that's actually the same format that the containerized disk importer uses. So if you wanted to import an exported image, you can do that. Uh, it's a neat trick, but you probably shouldn't migrate between clusters by exporting and importing. There's a more proper tool for that, but you can do it. Uh, a more proper tool is probably uh, Valero or something. And I want to show, first of all, a demo. So we have a, um, unfortunately, the usage is much easier in OpenShift. There's, a, uh, you can just use the virt codel vm export command. Um, prior to doing that, you need to enable feature gate. So this is not enabled by default. And you can use a virtual VM export, and it's really simple. So let me show a demo. Um, so first of all, let's make sure that, uh, just to make sure my demo is in fact visible, right? Fingers crossed. Okay, well, I'll blindly show it. <laughs> uh, oops. I don't know what I did. Okay, I hope it's visible. Um, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so first of all, let's uh, let's enable the feature gate. Uh, you got to edit the Qvert object. It lives in the Qvert namespace. So if you install it with a YAML, so under spec configuration, development configuration, and feature gate, you have a list. I don't know if it's an error, uh, if it's called an array or a list. It's a bunch of items. So you got to have VM export here to enable this feature. There's a couple of other features like this. So I have preemptively enabled in my demo the VM export. And let's uh, make sure we have a VM. So this is Cirrus. Um, it's not running right now. It's stopped. And uh, something to note about this environment, it's some um, OpenShift code-ready containers and um, there's a small difference between OpenShift and Kubernetes. So this works nicely on OpenShift. Uh, it's not as automagical on Kubernetes, but at least we, we can see what it's supposed to be like. So we use we got all, first we got to create the export. And then we got to download it and that takes a moment. Um, and after that, we'll have a this.img.gz. Uh, we can unpack it. We can. So, Cirrus has this nice, annoying thing where if you don't set it up with the uh, cloud in it, and I'm not super sure how to do it with Thank you, So, let's uh, edit the disk image. Uh, so, now because it's a local file, we can uh, mount it as a loop device. Got to first extract it before we do that. And it takes a moment. And we use LO setup to create a loop device. Uh, dash P gives you the partitions. So you can mount the partitions themselves. So loop one is this device, but loop one P one is the first partition. So this is a Cirrus uh, file system and here you can edit, so it stops 
uh, trying for, I don't know, 20 minutes to look at the cloud in it. If you don't have it configured before, it gives up. So let's edit that. So convenient for local debugging. Got to unmount it first before we boot it uh, as a local VM on our play machine with QMU because you can't have a file system mounted twice. And let's use this plain QMU KVM. And I'm going to use no graphic so it looks uh, maybe the text is more legible. And it boots a machine. And that's like the easiest way to use it. You just use virtual VM export. I pause here because it also waits a long time before DHCP, so we don't have to sit through that. And here you go. You run the same VM that you have on Kubert locally. And Unfortunately, this isn't as easy on Kubernetes. You got to set up Ingress, and you got to. And I've yet to figure out how to correctly set it up. So, I've shared at least how to use the internal URLs with port forward. So first, you got a port forward. I've uh, chosen to port forward uh, the HTTPS port to one eight four four three of the Vert export VM one export service. And then you got to get a token and a secret, uh, a token and a certificate, sorry. The certificate is part of the YAML. And the token is in a separate secret. And it's hopefully Base64 decoded, uh, encoded. Uh, all secrets are. So you'll need to decode it, and I'll just use it as is. So we have the same setup here. We have a serious VM. And we create a VM export. And of course, the feature gate is enabled. Otherwise, it would error telling us that we should enable it. Okay, so let's first port forward of the service. So we can do other things in another tab. And we want the token. The token lives in a secret called secret dash export name. So here it's VM1 export, secret VM1 export. And the first thing, uh, it's in the data token, uh, except this data is base64 encoded. Let's first decode it. And I'm using echo so that it prints a new line as well. And let's copy this and export it as our token. And now we want also the certificate that one lives in the VM export YAML. It's very obviously the thing where it says begin certificate and end certificate, but for some reason, there, there is two of them. Let's copy both of them to a local file so curl can read it and undo the indentation. And now we have a somewhat complicated curl command. So because we don't want to use dash k and just not validate HTTPS, um, we also need to make curl think that localhost is the host name that is appears in the certificate. So first of all, we pass in the token. It's got to be called uh, xqvert export token. We have it saved as a local variable. And we need to use this. Uh, uh, because of port forward, for our local machine, it, to connect to the server, we use localhost port 18443. But the certificate is valid for vert export VM1 export default SVC. So we're using this uh, esoteric command called connect to. And that makes curl think that this host name is actually localhost at another port. And then we can copy the URL and save it to a local file. And that takes a while. And also, I've noticed that sometimes I'll have to restart the port forward as it's not progressing if I'm doing it a bunch of times in a row. But this was a, I've just started the port forward, so it's not problematic. And we can mount this as a loop device, just as the other case. And get a first LO setup. And here it's loop zero. 
and that looks like a regular Linux file system. It uh, works just the same, but you gotta use this awkward walk around if you don't wanna figure out how to set up an ingress. So I've uh, failed to get it to work, unfortunately. So. Uh, which keyword versions does this exist on? So it's, it's fair to say that it started at 0 0.57 because previously you could only export a persistent volume. And then uh, 58, you got we added vert coral integration. And in the latest version, it even lets you export the YAML with the, the URLs all set up to download from the export URL. Uh, if for some reason you've got every all the networking set up correctly, you could theoretically and uh, Alexander Wells even did this. Uh, take your VM from one cluster, feed it to another cluster as a YAML, and uh, it'll just import from the exported URL. And there's also TTL support, which is uh, lifetime. So after a while, it expires in case the VM has a lot of sensitive data. So you might. The, I think that there's a default lifetime for this so that you don't accidentally forget to that you're exposing the disk contents of your virtual machines to the world, possibly, depending on how you set it up. And the code of this lives entirely in the main Qvert repo. That's uh, github.com Qvert Qvert. The authors are uh, Michael Henriksen, Alexander Wells, Varo Romero, and Alex Kalenyuk. And any questions? If they're in chat, I'll have to close this. Oops. No questions as of yet, but we've still got plenty of time for people to put their thoughts down. I tried my best to uh, figure out how to set it up with an ingress, but I failed. So I tried to at least show the walk around with the port forward. Well, I mean, technically you've got another 10 minutes of your presentation left, so you could uh, you could try and just live troubleshoot in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we do have a question now. Um, do we have documentation for the Kubernetes specific steps that are required? Um, no, I think they uh, currently live in an issue made by someone. And that also suggests using insecure, so that might not be the best idea. And we should really improve the documentation. I think Alexander Wells even has a PR for this. No, there's a separate Q&A. Any Well, oh, we do have another one. Uh, do I need a client certificate to download the export or can I use kill minus K? So in this case, I'm using the internal URL. Um, I'm not super sure what it, whether the setup is the same for the proper external URL. Um, it's not a client certificate, it's a server certificate, but you can use dash K and just then you just need to get the token. But maybe we should we should document the proper way as well. It's right now that's we are lacking in documentations at the moment. Uh, probably pointed out. And Adam is pointing out in the chat that. Uh, it's designed as a building block, and we can add in more features in the future. 